हेलो वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग सो एज आई मैंशन ऑन द चैट टूडे वील बी डिस्कसिंग अ फ्यू इमेजेस विच आर इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर द अपकमिंग एफ एम जी ई एग्जामिनेशन सो वॉट आई वुड एनकरेज इज दैट वाई लाइफ फ्लैश इन इमेज इफ यू कैन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट एज टू वॉट it the image is because it will be a very classical image uh, a very good morning riya right so let's go to the first image so what you can see here is that this is uh, a 14 year old male who is presenting with swelling which is localized to the foot it is involving the lower half of the uh, foot and the ankle area and you can see it's a mass it's a bosselated mass and over and above the swelling you can see that there are multiple discharging sinuses yes so pratishtha has mentioned correctly it is a case of mycetoma so how did you recognize that it is mycetoma pratishtha what is the triad of mycetoma the triad of mycetoma is three things one there is a swelling okay so there is a swelling which we can see so tumor then there are discharging sinuses okay that is the other clue in this particular uh, and there are grains right so uh, swelling discharging sinuses and grains grains are nothing but the colonies of the offending organism okay so just by looking at it we cannot conclude whether it is a mycetoma or is it an actinomycetoma mycetoma means what i am talking about is eumycetoma which is a true fungal mycetoma or is it an actinomycetoma okay so when you have a patient coming to you with swelling discharging sinuses and grains your differential diagnosis must include mycetoma okay now so as i mentioned mycetoma it's a triad of tumefaction sinuses and grains there are two kinds of mycetoma one is u mycetoma which is of true fungal origin and the other is actinomycetoma now u mycetoma means it is caused by a true fungus which it belongs to the madurella species and it is characterized by the presence of dark grains okay actinomycetoma is caused by nocardia actinomadura or streptomyces and it is characterized by white grains so usually the history is that there was a thorn prick which led to the formation of a painless nodule and then this painless nodule started discharging sinuses the foot becomes hard swollen and there can be bony as well as joint involvement so very good pr uh, pratishtha yes the other differential of a patient presenting with a swelling discharging sinuses and grains is botryomycosis so botryomycosis please remember it's a misnomer can someone tell me what is the causative organism of botryomycosis <clears throat> what is the causative organism for botryomycosis this is again a very important mcq yes very good pratishtha remember botryomycosis is a misnomer okay it is not a mycosis it is not a fungal infection it is actually caused by staphylococcus aureus okay so how do you remember botryomycosis is caused by staphylococcus aureus botryo literally means grapes and you know that staphylococcus aureus on a gram stain is going to show you a bunch of grapes appearance right so remember that botryomycosis is caused by staphylococcus aureus it is one of the differentials of mycetoma or it is a differential of a swelling presenting with discharging sinuses and grains okay so when we talk about mycetoma as i mentioned it can be true mycetoma or actinomycetoma how do you differentiate between the two u mycetoma will typically have darker grains they will be larger grains actinomycetoma will have white grains and it is going to be they are going to be a smaller grain okay of course what you can do is you can place uh, you can you know actually take uh, 
a gauze piece, wet it with normal saline and then wrap it around on the area where there are sinuses and you keep it overnight. The next morning you will see that there will be a few grains which will be there on that particular gauze piece. You can take a KOH mount, look out for the fungus. You can also do a gram stain. Uh, you can do a modified AFB stain for the nocardia. Okay, and you can identify the offending organism. Sometimes you may not see grain. So what you can do is you can take a deep biopsy and of course send one part of the biopsy for histopathology that is H &E staining and of course you will do a past stain, you will do an AFB stain on the biopsy specimen to look out for the offending organism and of course you can send half of that biopsy specimen for culture. Okay, so you will do a culture for AFB, you will do a culture for uh, the uh, KO, uh, for this in the sabrods dextrose agar and of course you will do a culture for the uh, bacteria as well okay and definitely because you know that mycetoma does involve the bone that is why you should do an x-ray to rule out any kind of bony involvement okay now so as we have already discussed when we look at a swollen foot with discharging sinuses you your differentials will be actinomycetoma eumycetoma and botryomycosis Investigations would include a KOH mount uh, for actinomycotic grains. There will be finer filaments. You can do a skin biopsy culture. For fungus, you will send a culture on the sabrods dextrose agar. For actinomyces, you will send a culture on the brain heart infusion agar. And of course, you will have to do an MRI, which will show you a typical dot in a circle sign. Okay. Now, how do you treat actinomycetoma? For treatment of actinomycetoma, you would prefer to use the Welch regimen which consists of giving amikacin along with cotrimoxazole and you can also add on other medications like amoxicillin, clavulanic acid okay and uh, for uh, eumycetoma you will need to give an antifungal medication something like itraconazole for botryomycosis you will give an anti-staphylococcal medication right so this is the colony of mycetoma now let's go to the second image now what can you see here this is a patient who is obese is also having this kind of darkening of the neck okay so what is your diagnosis i am talking about this what is your diagnosis dr priyanka says it's acanthosis nigricans Rhea also says it's acanthosis nigricans and Pratishtha also mentions acanthosis nigricans. All of you are right. The correct answer is that this is acanthosis nigricans. This is acanthosis nigricans occurring in an individual who is obese and diabetic. So basically remember acanthosis nigricans. Yes, Dr. Sumit, you are right. It is due to insulin resistance. Acanthosis nigricans is basically a misnomer. Okay. So remember that acanthosis nigricans, if you take a biopsy, you are not going to appreciate too much acanthosis and it is not because of the darkening of the or increased pigmentation. Okay, the appearance, the dark neck appearance that you see is because of hyperkeratosis of the epidermis and papillomatosis. Remember acanthosis nigricans is a misnomer, hyperkeratosis and papillomatosis will give rise to the darkening of the neck okay it is not because of acanthosis it is not because of nigricans means increased pigmentation so it's not because of increased melanin in the basal layer okay so this is wrong the correct reason for the appearance is hyperkeratosis and papillomatosis so as uh, dr sumit and ria both of you are right yes it is because of insulin resistance and the other signs of insulin resistance that you can see in this patient are that the patient is having you can see here the patient is having these skin tags yeah you can see here very well these are skin tags which are also called as acrocordons okay this is because of insulin resistance so what is acanthosis nigricans it is seen in any condition in which there can be insulin resistance and the most common condition is obesity there can be androgen excess especially in the females that is polycystic ovarian syndrome it can be drug related so remember the drugs which can cause acanthosis nigricans they include nicotinic acid okay nicotinic acid 
when you are taking nicotinic acid as uh, uh, you know something to decrease the triglycerides it can cause it testosterone can cause it diethyl stilbesterol oral contraceptive pills and glucocorticoids these are the causes of drug related acanthosis nigricans it can sometimes be idiopathic where there is no specific reason there can be malignancy associated at uh, acanthosis nigricans and remember the malignancy that is associated with acanthosis nigricans is gastric adenocarcinoma this is again a very very important mcq remember malignancy acanthosis nigricans is going to be very extensive it can involve the palms and soles and can also involve the lips and the mucosae right now when the palms are involved the rough appearance of the palms with acanthosis nigricans is called as tripe palms okay so tripe palms is associated with lung cancer so if they are specifically asking you acanthosis nigricans most common malignancy to be associated is gastric adenocarcinoma when they are asking you tripe palms or they are showing you a picture of the tripe palms the uh, common malignancy that is associated with tripe palms is lung cancer okay so basically what happens is whenever there is insulin resistance there is release of insulin like growth factor and this insulin like growth factor causes excess growth and that stimulates the epidermal keratinocytes this leads to the epidermal thickening that is the hyperkeratosis and papillomatosis of acanthosis nigricans so remember on histopathology there is no acanthosis and there is no increase in melanin it is because of papillomatosis which is upward finger like projections of the dermal papillae so this is papillomatosis and hyperkeratosis which is thickening of the stratum corneum now let's go to the third image so what can you see here this is a child who, uh, this is a 10 year old child who is presenting with a hyperpigmented patch on the back and over this hyperpigmented patch you can see that there are thick black terminal hair yes so dr priyanka dr baisla riya pratishtha yes all of you are right it is the becker's nevus yes dr sumit you are right it is becker's nevus becker's nevus is a condition which is a nevus that means it's a birthmark but it does not present at birth this is something that you need to remember becker's nevus is not present at birth becker's nevus is going to present sometime in adolescence sometime around puberty where it starts off as a brownish colored patch remember the color of the patch is brown it is not black why is it brown because becker's nevus is an epidermal nevus it's an epidermal uh, melanocytic nevus okay so the color is brown and when the patient attains puberty under the influence of the hormones the patient starts developing hair over and above that particular patch as well as there are acne form eruptions okay you will see that that particular patch is very very sensitive to the underlying androgens okay so that is why you will see appearance of acne and the appearance of thick terminal kind of hair over that patch dr sumit if at birth he says that the dd should be mongolian spot no i would disagree with this dr sumit if you see the mongolian spot the color of the mongolian spot is bluish gray why because mongolian spot is something that happens because of the arrest which is transient arrest of the migration of the melanocytes right the melanocytes you know they are not the residents of the epidermis they are migrants they are immigrants right now they come from the neural crest so while the melanocytes are traversing from the neural crest to the basal layer of the epidermis when there is a transient arrest okay when there is a transient arrest in their migration in the lower dermis it gives rise to the appearance of the mongolian spot 
and because the melanocytes are lower down in the lower dermis that is why the color that our eyes appreciate is bluish gray it is not brown okay so brown suggests that the pigment is epidermal when it is a bluish gray pigment it suggests that the that uh, the pigment that we are dealing with or the melanocyte that we are dealing with is in the lower dermis right and remember mongolian spot the usual location is the lumbosacral area that is the most common location the lumbosacral area in a newborn will show a bluish discoloration and that is the mongolian spot a mongolian spot in fact is going to disappear most of the mongolian spots they disappear by the age of 5 years okay so becker's nevus in fact does not present that birth it presents at around the age of uh, you know in adolescence okay so becker's nevus is basically an epidermal melanocytic nevus and though it is a birthmark the onset is in adolescence and as i mentioned that there is increased sensitivity of the androgens and hence you will see presentation with increased hair and acne over the hyperpigmented patch the most common site of the becker's nevus is usually the upper shoulder and the chest and this is what the becker's nevus looks like now next question look at this patient and tell me the diagnosis it is the leg and you can see there are certain very classical scales on the leg so riya says it's ichthyosis vulgaris anyone else wants to contribute yes sumit says ichthyosis Campylobacter says it's a reticular pattern. Dr. Priyanka says it's ichthyosis vulgaris. Ranjit also mentions it's ichthyosis vulgaris. Yes, you are all correct. The correct answer is ichthyosis vulgaris. Ichthyosis vulgaris is characterized by the presence of fish-like scales. Okay. so fish like scales as we can see in this particular picture is very classical for ichthyosis right so riya says that ichthyosis is associated with filaggrin deficiency yes it can be not fishy scales dr priyanka it is fish like scales yes yes all of you are right so depending upon the kind of the scale that we appreciate on the skin we are able to come to a conclusion as to what can be the possible diagnosis so the appearance of the scale the color of the scale the arrangement of the scale is going to give you a lot of clue as to what can be the diagnosis right now i am going to tell you the scale and you tell me what particular condition do you see that scale okay now let's begin the first is micaceous scale where do you see micaceous scales in which condition do you see micaceous scales yes so dr sumit campylobacter baisla priyanka yes all of you are right yes silvery micaceous scales are seen in psoriasis very good all of you now in which condition do you see yellowish greasy scales in which condition do you see yellowish greasy scales in which condition do you see yellowish greasy scales Campylobacter says carry on. Anyone? Pesla says carry on. Yellowish greasy scales.
anyone would want to contribute where do you see yellowish greasy scales okay the correct answer here is that yellowish greasy scales are seen in seboric dermatitis yes pratishtha riya both of you are right you see it in seboric dermatitis sumit it is seen in seboric dermatitis okay if if they tell you specifically yellowish greasy scales the only possible diagnosis is seboric dermatitis okay so why is it not uh, carrion so bacillus and campylobacter carrion is an inflammatory variant of tinea capitis which is characterized by the presence of a boggy swelling on the scalp which is studded with pustules and there is easy pluckability of hair right so this particular swelling is not characterized by the presence of scales per se primarily there will be pus there is going to be crusting okay but you won't describe them as greasy or yellowish scales okay remember the classical presentation of carrion is an inflammatory boggy swelling that is seen on the scalp especially in the pediatric age group and you will see that it is studded with pus and there will be easy pluckability there can also be associated lymphadenopathy because we are dealing with inflammatory variant of tinea capitis okay then somebody mentioned scutula now dr sumit scutula is something that we see typically and has been typically described in favus favus is also an inflammatory variant of tinea capitis which is caused by trichophyton schonlenii and scutula is basically a inverted cup shaped scale crust which is pierced in the center by the hair this particular cup shaped uh, crust is basically composed of the dried secretions and the fungal elements okay so remember scutula if you mention it's not greasy it may be yellow but it's not greasy okay remember scutula is something that you will see in favus okay now tell me in which condition do you get choleric scales choleric scales are seen in which particular condition classically choleric of scales is seen in all these are important mcqs okay yes So Dr. Sumit says P. Rosia, Pteria says Rosia. Campylobacter also says Pteria says Rosia. Pratishtha, yes, you are right. Yes, the correct answer here it is Pteria says Rosia. Pteria says Rosia is an infection which is caused by HHV six or HHV seven. It is characterized by the presence of a mother patch or the herald patch. Following the appearance of the herald patch or the mother patch, there are multiple. daughter lesions which tend to come up on the back especially on the back and the chest in a christmas tree pattern yes campylobacter it's a christmas tree pattern of distribution of the lesions and it is characterized by the presence of a choleric scale choleric scale means the scale is going to be present only in the periphery okay so you will not see it in the center you will see it in the periphery okay so choleric of scales is something that you will see in pteriasis rosea okay going on to the next scale fine branny furfuraceous scale fine branny furfuraceous scale in which condition do you see fine branny or furfuraceous scales yes so fine branny furfuraceous scales are seen in pteriasis versicolor okay yes uh, pratishtha you are right it's pteriasis versicolor yes dr priyanka it's pteriasis versicolor now indian says pemphigus vulgaris 
Now remember Indian pemphigus vulgaris is not characterized by the presence of scales. Pemphigus vulgaris will show you the presence of Ve uh, they, it will show you the presence of vesicles and bullae. The vesicles or bullae are going to be flaccid and they are going to leave behind painful erosions. Now tell me which particular vesiculobullous disorder are you going to see leaf-like scales? In which condition do you see leaf-like scales? In which vesiculobullous disorder do you see leaf-like scales? Indian, Indian, in which vesiculobullous disorder do we see leaf-like scales? Yes, very good. It is pemphigus foliaceus. The reason why it is called pemphigus foliaceus, foliaceus comes from the word foliage. Okay, foliage means leaves, right? So, leaf-like scales are seen in pemphigus foliaceus. Remember this, in pemphigus Vulgaris, we do not see scales, but in pemphigus foliaceus, there are leaf-like scales described. Why? Because in pemphigus foliaceus, the, it is characterized by a subcorneal cleft. So, the subcorneal cleft means that the roof of the blister is formed only by the stratum corneum. And the floor of the blister is formed by the stratum granulosum. So, because it is very, very superficial, most of the times it is very, very fragile. So, therefore, you do not see an intact bulla in pemphigus foliaceous. Okay, most of the times. What you end up seeing are erosions and crusted lesions. And these crusted lesions are covered with scales and crusts. So, leaf-like scales have been described for pemphigus foliaceous. While you do not see scales in pemphigus vulgaris, is because you see bullae, intact bullae, but they are flaccid bullae, which show easy tendency to rupture. They expand easily on their own and they easily rupture on their own, leaving behind painful erosions. Okay? Yes, Indian we had one hour, so whatever I can cover in one hour is what I will try. Okay, now let's go to we discussed ichthyosis vulgaris, right? So, ichthyosis vulgaris, what you need to remember is that ichthyosis vulgaris does not present at birth. Okay? It presents at 3 to 4 months after birth. It is an autosomal dominant condition. It is characterized by the presence of fish-like scales. The association of keratosis pilaris is atopy uh, of uh, ichthyosis vulgaris is atopy and keratosis pilaris. Remember that in ichthyosis vulgaris, the extensors are involved and the flexures are spared. Palms and soles are involved with increase in the skin markings, which is called as palmoplantar hyperlinearity. Okay. Then you also have X-linked ichthyosis. X-linked ichthyosis is seen before 3 months of age and it is characterized by the deficiency of steroid sulfatase. This is a very important MCQ. Okay, so it is characterized by the presence of steroid sulfatase deficiency. It's an X-linked recessive condition and is characterized by fine to large dirty brown looking scales. It is kind of an opposite of ichthyosis vulgaris because it presents less than 3 months. It involves more of, of flexures rather than extensors. Palms and soles are spared. The associations include undescended testis, undescended testis and corneal opacities. Remember this, undescended testis and corneal opacities are seen as associations of X-linked ichthyosis. Now, this is again a very, very important image-based question. Now, see here, what is this? This is a colloidal baby. So, what is a colloidal baby? It is a baby which presents as birth with a parchment-like membrane which is encasing the entire body. And because of the taut nature of this membrane, you will see that there will be associated ectropion. Ectropion means the child is not able to completely close the eye. There will be eclabium. Eclabium is eversion of the lips and the patient is not able to completely close the mouth. Okay. And you can see that there will be kind of uh, difficulty in opening the entire uh, hand. Okay. So, this is a colloidal baby. A colloidal baby is 
primarily going to be a presentation of certain disorders of keratinization so remember lamellar ichthyosis presents as a colloidal baby at birth it is an autosomal recessive condition and this is what it eventuates in this particular colloidal membrane further disintegrates and later the child develops this kind of a presentation of lamellar ichthyosis lamellar ichthyosis is characterized by large plate like scales so remember plate like scales are seen in lamellar ichthyosis and it looks like an armor here extensors flexors palm soles everything is involved so remember lamellar ichthyosis presents as both as a colloidal membrane and it is characterized by the presence of large plate like scales then another important ichthyosis which you need to know is bullous ichthyosis for erythroderma it presents at birth but there is no colloidal okay there is no colloidal membrane and patients are going to present with bullae that is why it is called as bullous so there will be bullae it is an autosomal dominant condition these bullae are going to leave behind rough scales palms and soles extensors flexures everything is involved and the patient is in erythroderma okay now let's go to this particular image this is a female patient presenting with this particular pre, uh, kind of alopecia what do you think is the diagnosis yes so dr priyanka says female patterned hair loss anyone else yes dr priyanka you are right this is nothing but female patterned hair loss okay and why is it female patterned hair loss is because you can see that there is widening of the central partition giving rise to an inverted christmas tree appearance right so this you can see that the frontal hairline this hairline is preserved but when you take a central partition you are seeing more visibility of the scalp so this is female patterned hair loss and yes as riya mentions it the classification that is used for grading the severity of uh, female patterned hair loss is the ludwig's classification okay so the difference between the male pattern and the female pattern of androgenetic alopecia is that in the female pattern you do not see any loss of the frontal hairline okay there is loss of the mid frontal scalp hair therefore there is gradual increase in the central parking a uh, parting which gives rise to a christmas tree pattern it may be associated with uh, underlying hyperandrogenic situations like polycystic ovarian disease the ludwig scale is used for grading and how do you treat female patterned androgenetic alopecia you can give topical minoxidil it is fda approved for this particular indication you can also give oral anti androgens like uh, ciprotron acetate spironolactone or flutamide and if the underlying factor is absent you can give minoxidil uh, more orally or maybe topically also and finasteride may be used but not very effective and it is contraindicated in pregnancy so you do not give finasteride to a patient who is in the reproductive age group you can prefer it in uh, post menopausal females treatment of course is lifelong yes indian you are right oslin is also one of the grading uh, classifications for female pattern dga and yes dr sumit you are right in males in male androgenetic alopecia you use the hamilton uh, grading okay this is the this is basically the uh, grading of uh, ludwig grading of uh, female pattern hair loss now let's go to this particular image you can see that this patient is presenting with multiple yellowish colored asymptomatic papular lesions on the buccal mucosa what is your diagnosis asymptomatic yellow colored papules which are present on the Dr. Baisla can you see this 
can you see these yellowish colored papules which are kind of conglomerated here so ria the color is very important you can appreciate that these are yellowish in color lichen planus is violaceous in color right it is violaceous so it is purplish in color so it is not lichen planus dr sumit wickham strai are seen in lichen planus okay so it is not lichen planus as i just mentioned so basically these are phordysis spots phordysis spots are nothing but the ectopic sebaceous glands you know that technically the sebaceous glands they open out into the hair follicle right but when the sebaceous glands they open out directly onto the surface of the skin without any connection with the uh, hair follicle they are called as phordysis spots the most common site of phordysis spots is the lips okay but you can also get phordysis spots inside the buccal mucosa you can also get it on the penile shaft okay so tyson's glands basically remember tyson's glands are the phordysis spots on the penis okay so phordysis spots are ectopic sebaceous glands where the duct is directly connected to the overlying skin or the mucosal surface they are ectopic and they are freely lying now other phordysis that you need to remember is the fox phordysis disease which is also called as apocrine malaria so you know that the apocrine glands they are present in the axillae yes dr sumit that is what i am discussing phordysis spots are ectopic sebaceous glands and fox phordysis disease is also called as apocrine malaria apocrine malaria is because there are apocrine glands in the axillae and these apocrine glands when the duct tends to get obstructed there is uh, inflammation occurring at the upper parts of the ducts which leads to obstruction and this is characterized by the presence of intensely pruritic papules in the uh, there are intensely pruritic papules which are present in the apocrine area so here you can appreciate this is fox phordysis disease okay here you can appreciate the papules yeah this is an intensely pruritic condition that you more commonly seen in the females so this is fox phordysis disease so remember phordysis spots are different fox phordysis disease is different fox phordysis disease is also called as apocrine malaria okay this is fox phordysis disease okay now look at this image you can see that this is a lesion which is present on the knee you can see that in this particular lesion there is central scarring and there is a peripheral border which is very active okay can you see can you appreciate this central scarring right you can appreciate the thinning of the skin you can appreciate the atrophy you can appreciate that uh, there is excessive wrinkling of the skin so uh, listen to what i am saying and then make a diagnosis you can appreciate there is central scarring okay there is central scarring do you see any silvery micaceous scales for it to be psoriasis no we do not see any scales here so what is this you can see that the border is active it is extending at the other end it is progressive at the other end it is healing with scarring right so this is yes so yes pratishtha can you be more specific what kind of tb are we dealing with here as i told you it's not psoriasis psoriasis is characterized by the presence of an indurated erythematous plaque with overlying silvery micaceous scales here you do not see scales at all what you are seeing is there is an atrophy or scarring in the center and there is a peripheral active indurated border dr sumit dr pratishtha both of you are right it is a kind of cutaneous tuberculosis but i want a specific answer yes dr sumit you are right it is lupus vulgaris lupus vulgaris is the most common form of cutaneous tuberculosis which is characterized by the presence of central scarring and a peripheral active edge 
yes pratishta you are right it is lupus vulgaris so lupus vulgaris can be either be exogenous or endogenous exogenous means the bacilli the tb bacilli are inoculated into the skin from the environment and it can be endogenous means that there is a focus of tuberculosis somewhere else in the body and then it comes up into the skin this tends to happen in a patient who is already sensitized and hence the montu test is expected to be positive okay so now here characteristically you will see that there is a single plaque of group red brown papules which heals at one end and it progresses at the other end and while it is healing it is going to heal with scarring so in this picture the scarring you appreciate by the presence of thinning atrophy and wrinkling and shiny appearance of the skin right so it is healing with scarring face and the buttocks are common sites it's a posy bacillary disease means if you try and isolate the tb bacillus from this patient it will not be very easy it's very very difficult to isolate the tb bacilli in lupus vulgaris as sumit directly and very correctly mentions that apple jelly nodules are seen on dioscopy what is dioscopy dioscopy means you take a glass slide and you place that glass slide onto the lesion and you will see the presence of nodular lesions they will appear as yellowish colored nodules okay when you press the lesion with a glass slide so those are called as apple jelly nodules also lupus vulgaris you will see the matstick test positive so what is the matstick test when you place a wooden matstick on the lesion of lupus vulgaris the stick penetrates the thin dermis easily but stands on itself without support on the firm dermal nodules on skin biopsies you will see the presence of tubercular granulomas remember that caseation necrosis is not common in cutaneous variants of tuberculosis versus the other pulmonary variants okay or tb anywhere else in the body remember skin biopsy is going to show you tubercular granulomas but there will be scant or absent caseation and because it's a posy bacillary disease it will be very difficult for you to demonstrate the acid fast bacilli okay so remember the clue if you have central clearing it is tenia if it is central scarring it is lupus vulgaris if there is central crusting it is leishmaniasis okay remember this is very important for you because of course you are not just going to be shown an image you will be given a stem of the mcq read it properly if it tells you central clearing annularity of the lesion then suggestive of tenia central scarring annular lesion suggestive of lupus vulgaris and central crusting suggestive of leishmaniasis now look at this image you can see that there are two images in one you can see there are thick rupioid crusted lesions hyperkeratotic thick rupioid crusts right this is what you would describe this crust as okay and what can you see in this patient you can see there is inflammation of the glands so what is the inflammation of the glands called it is called as balanitis and can you appreciate it is like it is something like this right it is like this so what is this this is sarcinate balanitis okay this is sarcinate balanitis along with psoriasiform hyperkeratotic lesions which are covered with thick rupioid scales and crusts can someone tell me what is the diagnosis in which condition do you see this yes dr sumit you are very very correct it is nothing but writer syndrome also called as reactive arthritis okay so what is reactive arthritis it is a triad of arthritis of the weight bearing joints along with it there is urethritis and there is conjunctivitis 
सो रिमेंबर कांट सी कांट पी कांट बेंड माई नी इज हाउ यू रिमेंबर दिस ट्रायड कांट सी कंजंक्टिवाइटिस कांट पी यूरेथ्राइटिस कांट बेंड माई नी इज आथ्राइटिस ओके इट इज कैरेक्टराइज बाय प्रेजेंस ऑफ एंथेसाइटिस वॉट इज एंथेसाइटिस इट इज द पेन एंड स्वेलिंग एंड इन्फ्लमेशन दैट हैपन्स एट द इंसर्शन ऑफ द टेंडेंस ओके सो वेन यू हैव एंथेसाइटिस यू हैव मोस्ट कॉमन टेंडन टू बी इन्वॉल्व इज द अचलिस टेंडन एंड प्लांटार फेशिया ओके सो दिस इज द हॉलमार्क ऑफ द डिसीज इट इज एन एच एल ए बी ट्वेंटी सेवन एसोसिएटेड कंडीशन देर आर टू फॉर्म्स देर इज अ सेक्शुअली ट्रांसमिटेड फॉर्म विच हैपन्स ड्यू टू एक्सपोजर टू क्लमाइडिया ट्रकोमैटिस एंड यूरिया प्लाज्मा थ्रू द सेक्शुअल रूट एंड देर इज अ पोस्ट एंट्रिक इन्फेक्शन विच हैपन्स बिकॉज ऑफ इन्फेक्शन टू शिगेला सालमोनेला यूरसीनिया एंड कैम्पाइलोबैक्टर देर आर स्किन मैनिफेस्टेश रिएक्टिव आथ्राइटिस विच इज कैरेक्टराइज बाय कैराटोडोमा ब्लेनोरेजिका कैराटोडोमा मीन्स देर इज इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ द पाम्स एंड द सोल्स और देर इज थिकनिंग ऑफ द स्किन ऑफ द पाम्स एंड सोल्स ब्लेनोरेजिका ब्लेनोरेजिका ब्लेनोज मीन्स टू वीप right so there are vp moist lesions causing thick uh, thickening of the palms and soles so that is called as keratoderma blenorejica and cercinate balanitis so that is why this patient will come to a dermatologist otherwise why will someone with arthritis urethritis conjunctivitis come to a dermatologist because there are skin manifestations and the dermatologist can be the first one diagnosing it because the skin manifestations can be very very classical in the form of keratoderma blenorejica and cercinate balanitis okay now let's go to the next question so what can you see your i will just move around so that you can see the lesions properly or i can what i can do is i can shift this particular uh picture here so it will be easier for you to appreciate it right so what do you see here you you can see that on the penile shaft on the prepuce and on the glands there are these very i'm sorry there are these very tiny lesions okay can you see these very tiny means very tiny means it is micropapular they are micropapular lesions which are shiny right and they are whitish in color and they are present on the penile shaft and the glands so what do you think is the diagnosis micropapular shiny lesions present on the penile shaft prepuce and the glands what is your diagnosis so homo sapiens says gonorrhea gonorrhea is a cause of gonorrhea is a cause of urethral discharge urethral discharge means there will be thick purulent mucopurulent discharge coming through the urethra okay so that is gonorrhea this is not gonorrhea gonorrhea will i mean not present as papules like this now dr sumit says hsv genitalis so herpes genitalis dr sumit is going to present as multiple vesicles these are not vesicles these are solid papules right and they are micro papules to be specific so herpes genitalis the classical presentation is multiple vesicles which are grouped together and when they rupture they give leave behind painful erosions and these painful erosions they tend to coalesce together and they give rise to a polycyclic appearance right that is the classic presentation of herpes yes so your second option that is like in nitidus uh, and pratishta as well like in nitidus this is the correct answer like in nitidus is characterized by the presence of multiple papules which are dome shaped they are a little whitish and shiny and they are less than 2 mm in diameter they are going to be present on the trauma prone areas you will see them on the dorsa of the hands feet on the um, around the umbilicus you will see them on the penile shaft and they will exhibit the phenomenon of kebnerization so what is kebnerization kebnerization is the appearance of lesions at the sites of trauma right 
yes very good dr sumit on histopathology you will see a claw clutching a ball appearance on histopathology right so what do you see on histopathology you will see that there is one dermal papilla you can see there is this one dermal papilla is getting involved and the retiridge is kind of incurving okay and you will see that there is basement membrane destruction and you will see the presence of a lichenoid infiltrate uh, which is consisting of lymphocytes and histiocytes with the basal cell vacuolization which is involving just one dermal papilla with the retiridge kind of incurving right so this appearance has been likened to claw clutching a ball right so this is what i wanted you to know remember lichen nutritus is characterized by the presence of micropapules which are tiny they are whitish in color shiny in appearance and they exhibit kebnerization okay now now you can look at this quest uh, image and let me know what you think about the diagnosis here you can see the involvement is in the axilla okay what can you see there are multiple nodules right there are these nodules these nodules are very painful okay these nodules are discharge discharging pus okay so it is suppurative and you can see there is a sinus here right so there is a tendency to sinus formation and when it is healing it is healing with these kind of band like scars so what is your diagnosis axilla involvement nodules suppuration sinuses band like scars what is your diagnosis dr sumit says it is hydradenitis suppurativa anyone wants to add Yes, Doctor Samit, you are right. It is hydradenitis suppurativa. Very, very good. So basically, hydradenitis suppurativa. It occurs because of occlusion of the hair follicles and the apocrine ducts. Okay. So primarily, what happens in hydradenitis suppurativa is that there is a keratin plug. Okay. Now you can see this particular keratin plug. It is. Present at the level of the hair follicle, and it is also causing blockage of the apocrine gland. So you know that the apocrine glands are present in the axilla, and unlike the eccrine glands, the apocrine glands open out into the hair follicle. So when these apocrine glands open out into the hair follicle, and when their duct gets blocked, the apocrine glands are going to kind of uh you know they they will not have an outlet to their content so the content will keep on increasing inside and uh, there will be increasing pressure inside the apocrine gland similarly if you see the sebaceous gland the sebaceous gland also opens out into the hair follicle but when there is a blockage to the hair follicle or there is occlusion to the hair follicle the outlet of the sebaceous gland is also blocked so there is increasing pressure of the contents of the sebaceous glands so what's going to happen is eventually there will be a point in time where the pressure is too much and the sebaceous glands and the apocrine glands they are going to burst open under the skin okay now whatever has come out is a good medium for the bacteria to multiply so you will have a bacterial infection and then what's going to happen is ultimately there is so much of pressure building up inside the skin then it is going to open out and that's going to lead to the formation of a sinus and it is going to discharge pus okay so primarily if you see the hydradenitis suppurativa it presents as comedones comedones is that blockage of the uh, hair follicle okay so it presents as comedones then there are red tender nodules there are abscesses and then there is healing with sinuses and scarring so this happens in the apocrine gland bearing areas like it happens in the axillae can happen in the groin can happen in the inframammary area at times it can involve the pubic region and the anogenital regions as well so this resembles acne but this is it in the this is present in the flexures so it is also called as inverse acne or the other name is acne inversa okay 
so remember the other name for hydradenyl antisuppurativa is acne inversa secondary bacterial infection with staphylococcus aureus streptococcus pyogenes and gram negative organisms can occur so these are the tender nodules you can appreciate here tender nodules of hydradenyl antisuppurativa then you can see there are these kind of discharging sinuses and then when they heal they heal with this kind of band like scar so even the scar is going to give you a clue to the diagnosis band like scars are typically seen in hydradenitis suppurativa and bridging scars you can see here bridging scars they are very like this linearly elongated scars okay how do you treat hydradenitis suppurativa it is with antibiotics like tetracycline amoxicillin clindamycin minocycline rifampicin oral isotretinoin can be used to reduce the keratin plugs you can surgically excise the affected tissue uh, you can combine it with laser hair reduction and adalimumab is again an anti uh, it's a biological uh, uh, and it is it is the upcoming first line treatment of hydradenitis suppurativa now i think this will be the last image that we can discuss for this particular session this is a child who is presenting with this particular kind of alopecia look at the pattern of the alopecia and you will come to a diagnosis a very characteristic sign is what you see in this patient what do you think is the answer anyone you can see that the hair the 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 patch is not completely bald there is hair on the patch okay but the hair they are broken off at different lengths and you can see that the hairline is spared okay so this is called as the tonsure sign it is also called as the orientrich sign also called as the frayer tuck sign okay so tonsure sign orientrich sign tonsure sign orientrich sign and the frayer tuck sign this is nothing but the frontal hairline the hairline per se being preserved okay and yes pratishtha ranjit both of you are correct very very good the correct answer here is trichotillomania trichotillomania is an impulse control disorder where the child or the patient has an impulsive you know starts with an impulse to kind of pull out the hair okay and uh, basically there are two kinds of pullers in trichotillomania in some people it happens unconsciously while they are seeing the tv while they are talking on the phone while they are reading they will pull out the hair okay so they, are, they that happens at a subconscious level while others are very much aware that they are doing it okay so they will pull out the hair they will pack them up and they will preserve them somewhere where nobody can see them okay so they will do it consciously so there are conscious pullers and subconscious pullers and basically the reason why the conscious pullers do it is because it gives them a sense of release of tension okay it gives them gratification it's a positive response that they experience after the pulling out of hair okay so trichotillomania is definitely when you are trying to pull out your own hair it will be difficult to produce a bald patch so you never see any bald patches complete bald patches in trichotillomania what you are going to see is that there will be preservation of hair but the hair will be broken off at different lengths and it will be more prominent on the dominant side so if you are using your right hand you are going to more likely that the patch is going to be more visible on the right hand side and the hairline will be spared so remember that if you have to differentiate trichotillomania versus alopecia areata hair is never completely lost in trichotillomania in contrast to alopecia areata okay uh orientrich freyerta or tonsure sign is seen where there is loss of the central area because it is easier to pull and there is sparing of the margins of the scalp histopathology will show no or very little inflammation and treatment is with behavioral modification therapy and in adults maybe you can go in for therapy like clomipramine ssri hypnosis or psychotherapy okay so that finishes our session for today 
uh, i would earnest, earn i mean i would earnestly request you to join an academy an academy is a very beautiful platform it gives you a lot of choice it gives you a lot of flexibility to choose what you want whether you want to study one particular subject whether you want to study it as a live lecture you want to study it as a recorded lecture whether you want to uh, have only test series whether you want to have only the mcq question bank so do visit the an academy website and do subscribe to it it is going to benefit you a lot in your preparations okay and definitely we will come up with such sessions in the future as well so do follow me on an academy and there are multiple special classes that are taken at periodic intervals which are going to help you a lot in uh, your preparations and revisions okay so with that i end my session thank you very much you have all been very very interactive it was a pleasure see you very soon bye